Good morning. Michael Mazarang here again. And today we're gonna to talk more about Atmox systems. Uh, Atmox systems are one of my favorite systems to deploy on a crawl space home. Uh, today we're in Uptown Charlotte, uh, looking at a house uh, that had a system installed by another installer uh, a couple years ago. And the installation uh, was not done properly. Uh, so today we're going to talk about why the system wasn't installed properly and what you have to do to get a properly installed Atmox program on the house uh, and who you should call to do it. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, this house is uh, about 4,000 square feet on the crawl space. So certainly when you have a 4,000 square foot crawl space, uh, doing a standard encapsulation becomes problematic because you have so much square footage to ventilate that uh, without the assistance of a certain amount of dead corner fans, pipe fans, as well as uh, additional intake exhaust fans to port air in and out of the structure, you know, you're not gonna be able to condition the crawl space very well. So what this installer did, uh, as you see here in the front, they chose to port air into the crawl space from the front of the house, which was a huge mistake. Uh, you can see here, this was where one of the fans was located. Uh, and then they also exhausted the air in the back of the home, which as I walk around here, you can see that there's not a lot of foundation vents on the home and there's a lot of dead corners. And the Atmox system is designed to remedy a dead corner situation, but you have to put your fans in the right place. So what we did is we completely reversed the design of this system. We moved the fans to the left side of the house and exhausted out the right side. And as we walk around the house here, you'll see where exhausting air off the back of this house, really, you've got this porch here uh, also, uh, you have just such a few amount of vents to, to actually utilize here on the back that it just wasn't a good choice as far as porting the air uh, out the back side. Uh, we also uh, installed some vent wells. We noted that water intrusion was coming into the structure on this back side of the house. And you can see we deployed four vent wells. And this is the biggest mistake that we'll see uh, with the uh, uh, with waterproofing companies, they'll be quick to want to install sump pumps. And in a lot of times, just doing basic foundation drainage improvements uh, is what will resolve water intrusion into a crawl space, such as keeping gutters clean and free flowing, making sure they're extended away from the house, uh, as well as deploying vent wells on any below grade uh, vent situations. So we're gonna go around to the back side here, uh, to the crawl space and see what changing the direction of the fans did to get this Atmox system performing at 100% peak efficiency here located by this equipment since they are above grade vents well above grade so when we do have good air for air exchange outside this is a great place to bring in air and here we are in the crawl space <laughs> this crawl space was encapsulated uh, by another company uh, a long time ago. So we do have a fiber reinforced liner here. Uh, so, you know, these can be deployed. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the fiber reinforced liners as they tend to off gas odor, but uh, certainly uh, they are, you can tape these down and they're effective uh, for keeping the soil release uh, getting into the upstairs. And it was a full in cap protocol. And you can see now where uh, we changed the direction of the fans. And added our triple intakes at the left side. You can also see here that the uh, floor system was clean. Uh, of microbial development, uh, and they, they did a nice job on that. We 
but you can see here where uh, we have a lot of duct work that's in the center of this crawl space. And it's the first thing I noticed when I did my inspection here, uh, is how are we gonna get air from the left side of this crawl space? Again, it's 4,000 square feet. So how do you get the air to the other side? Gotta use a, gotta use a pipe fan. So I'll try to get over to where the dehumidifier is. And you can see here, oh, this ductwork, it's a pretty tight crawl space. So you've got this uh, main trunk line, which is uh, running right down the middle of the crawl space. Well, the other installer did nothing to port the air from this side of the crawl space over to the other side. So when we take a wood moisture reading today in this section, yeah, well, we're around 11% over here. Now, when I was here the first time, that wood moisture reading was up around 20% down the other side of the crawl space. So let's try to get over to the other side of the crawl space. It is a hot, humid day today. So we are not able to use the outside air. This system is equipped with a dehumidifier backup package. This is a Santa Fe dehumidifier. Uh, so uh, this is a good dehumidifier. It is a 90 pint dehumidifier. Uh, and in concert with using the, uh, the fan system to port the air from one side to another, we can get this conditioned air to the other side of the crawl space. Here we are again on the other side of the dehumidifier. We can see the dehumidifier is running today as the dew points are elevated. I think the lows last night were only, uh, it was 72 degrees uh, with relative humidity up in the 80s. So uh, we were not able to use the outside air. So the system is equipped with a dehumidifier. And during the summertime, you have less opportunity for air exchange. So this dehumidifier may have to run uh, quite a bit during uh, July and August to maintain crawl space health. This is what we call a pipe fan. This pipe fan is hooked up to a 25 foot, eight inch duct kit. And this is how we're moving the air from one side of the crawl space to the other side, which the other installer failed to design into the original uh, program. There are two of these pipe fans one about 20 feet to my right. And this location here where we had to take the duct kit and carefully weave it through this labyrinth of duct work to get the conditioned air from either the intakes on the left side of the house or this dehumidifier and move that conditioned air to the left side where there was a, uh, where there's a, a difference between the wood moisture prospectively on each side of the crawl. So now we're gonna go to the other side of the crawl space and we're gonna take another wood moisture reading to confirm uh, that the design change is in fact working. This is what we call a dead corner fan. And we are in one of the dead pockets on the back right section of the footprint. And we've got six of these deployed. We took the original three that the other company installed and we added three more uh, to facilitate uh, extra air movement through this crawl space. As you can see, I'm surrounded by ductwork and it's quite a struggle to get into these pockets. We're probably 20 feet from the dehumidifier now, 25 feet maybe. And we can see wood moisture is at 12 and a half percent in this dead pocket. So proof, proof positive that just dehumidification and air movement uh, from the internal and external ports is not good enough. You have to have these dead corner fans and pipe fans uh, as reason or previously discussed in order to move the air around a crawl space. Crawl space is, has, it has, to, it has to breathe. It's a, uh, you have to treat it like a living organism. 
Okay, here we are on the other side of the crawl space on the tight side, which is the right side if you're facing the street. And you can see over there is where our pipe fan, one of the pipe fans comes out and is exhausting conditioned air uh, all the way over to this side. So uh, we're gonna go a little bit further uh, to, the, to the right here. And we're gonna take another moisture reading. How about that? Consistent, 12% all the way across the crawl space. And the wood moisture sensor that is going to the controller in the house that you'll see on your picture also confirmed at 12.2%. How cool is that? You can see here today, here's the exhaust fans. And of course they're off today because it's just too humid for, uh, for us to pour it in the outside air. And this is, a common uh, attack that the encapsulation companies will use against fans. But if the fan is calculating dew point, then it's not a problem. So here we are on the outside of the house again. Of course, our exhaust fans are on this side uh, when they're able to use the outside air. We have three triples uh, here that will exhaust stale air from the environment. So the main thing is when you're designing an Atmox system, you may want to get a couple of different estimates from Atmox installers. Ask some questions. Ask how much experience they have in installing these things, because it's critical that they're installed correctly. Contact Atmox systems. Ask for a personal referral from the management team, the people that are best trained in the market that you live in to install the system ask a lot of questions. But certainly the difference between having a system that's working partially to full capacity could be as simple as adding two pipe fans to the protocol as we did on this system. And certainly making sure your sensors are properly functioning as we see here. Uh, Equip your system with a wood moisture sensor and also take advantage of any upgrades. Certainly uh, the newest controller upgrade is one of my favorites and we're putting a lot of those in uh, here, here these days and uh, uh, look forward to uh, uh, doing more Atmox installs. But I hope you learned a little bit about control ventilation today, what to do, what not to do, and uh, certainly it's important to hire an installer that is fully trained, hopefully has 10 years of experience in deploying these systems like we do. And just, you can reach out to us at the number at the bottom of your screen, or you can certainly contact Atmox Systems directly for a referral. And we can certainly set an appointment to come visit you if you're in the Charlotte market. But again, we appreciate you joining us. Look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Have a good day.